Hello friends, this video on transport in plants and animals part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us try to understand the composition of blood. We, let's know more about blood first. Now, how do you know what is blood composed of? What is blood made up of? Now, in order to know that, a simple experiment was performed where a sample of blood was taken in a test tube and then centrifugation was performed. So, what is centrifugation? Centrifugation means uh, to move an object at a very high speed. Now, when you take blood in a test tube, so like this you take a sample of blood and this is how a centrifuge looks like. So you see at the center you have uh, the test tube holders and in these test tube holders you have inserted the test tubes with blood samples. Now when you start centrifuge the centrifuge what will happen is this will start rotating very fast at a very high speed it will keep on rotating like this now when it moves at such high speeds what happens is the denser components in the blood they tend to move away and the lighter components stay near to the center so this is the center when it moves in a circular path like this so the denser components will move away and the lighter components will move near to the center so, as a result, after some time, what you will see is the test tube gets segregated into two halves. So, the lower part of the test tube consists of the denser components of blood and the upper part of the test tube con contains the lighter components of blood. So, this uh, division of the blood components based on their density happens due to centrifugation because when you move them at a very high speed the denser components will remain at the bottom because they are very dense and heavy you know they cannot move that much whereas the lighter components they being light they try to come towards the center so they remain at the top so that's how the blood that's how it was found out that blood is not just one particular liquid it is also made up of different components some of which are denser some of which are lighter so let us look at the various components of blood which were uh, obtained after performing centrifugation of the blood sample so let us look at the same blood sample which was obtained after uh, undergoing the uh, centrifugation so we saw it in three different layers so this was the first layer, this was the, the thin layer which you see in between, that is the second layer and this red colored layer was the third layer. So this is second layer and this is first layer. Now actually this first layer should have been up to here actually. So this entire thing is the same. Okay, so these were the three layers which were obtained. So this first layer was called plasma so this layer was plasma and what is plasma this plasma was not red in color but this plasma was found to be uh, some creamish color so here which i have denoted as creamish color because the plasma was not red in color so that means this component of blood plasma is not the one which is responsible for the red color of blood because we see blood as red but this plasma component is not red in color and when you look at its abundance, this was present almost 55% of the total volume was occupied by plasma. So plasma was like quite uh, predominant there. So in that test tube, more than half of the test tube was covered with plasma. So that's why I said that the screen color which was drawn earlier was little less. So it should be more than half of the test tube was covered by plasma. Then in between there was a thin buffy coat. So, you know, a buffy layer kind of a structure. So, this was the second layer and this comprised of less than 1% of the entire volume of the test tube. So, this less than 1%, this buffy coat later found to contain two components of blood that is white blood cells and platelets. So white blood cells and platelets, they, they, they are not even though present in very large amounts, but they play very important roles. We will talk about their functions a little later. And finally, this third layer, which was red in color, it was RBC, that is red blood cells. So they 
constituted almost 45% of the total volume and these RBCs were the most dense of all the other components. So that is why they are at the bottom most layer. So what did we obtain that blood actually consists of these four important components. First is plasma, next is red blood cells or erythrocytes. So red blood cells are also called as erythrocytes or in short form they are also written as RBCs. Next was WBCs or white blood cells which were also called leukocytes. And the fourth one was platelets which was also called thrombocytes. So these are the four components of blood. So now if I ask you out of these four components which component contribute the red color of blood what would be your answer? Of course the red blood cells that is why they are called red blood cells and why these red blood cells are red because of a presence of a red colored pigment called hemoglobin and we have learned about hemoglobin in our previous lesson that it helps in transport of oxygen because it has very high affinity for oxygen. Okay, so that was about the various components. Now it's time that we pick up each of these components and know more about them. So Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.